Howdy everybody, Michelle here, and today I am going to show everybody how to do the much anticipated, say hi to Creepy Carl, and that's why we call him Creepy Carl, little helper hat. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I think one of the biggest questions I have gotten from people over the years is, how can I make an elf hat? How can I do these points? How can I do this? So um, what I did is I made you guys an elf hat complete with bells and the whole nine yards. And the great thing is, is this is actually all one piece. Obviously not the palm. I attached that. But from this point all the way down to all of these um, points on the brim, that's all one piece. And that's how I'm going to show you because a lot of people aren't comfortable with um, stitching things on and sewing things on and so forth and so on. So I'm gonna show you guys the easiest way to do this so you can have a whole lot of fun. You can have your own little helper hat. And let's talk about some supplies. So what we need for this, obviously, is a couple of things. We have our looming hook, scissors, our handy dandy tape measure, I have Mr. Frog here. I do have a couple of these left uh, available. If you'd like to purchase one, you can find it on my Etsy. I will have the link down below in the information section. If you have a pom-pom maker, awesome. If not, you can find lots of tutorials here on YouTube of how to make it out of simple home things like toilet paper roll, a piece of cardboard, all kinds of stuff. Me, I love these Clover pom-pom makers. It makes it really super simple and knocks it out pretty quick. If you want to add bells, it's not absolutely necessary, but it gives you that little bit of a holiday spirit. I got a pack of these 12. Um, I added one on each one of the points with Creepy Carl here. And also there's one here on the palm. So if you want to sound like you're jingling all the way, you just jingle, okay? And if anybody tells you otherwise, get rid of that negativity. You don't need it in your life. But I got a pack of 12 of these at Joann's for only 99 cents. Really inexpensive. You're going to need your darning needle, obviously. Masking tape is your best friend, especially for this. Um, and the reason why is because we were working in the sections to give those colored um, stripes. And as you mark your loom, as I'm going to show you, it will help so much to keep track of that. You also need a regular stitch marker. So if you use a rubber band, if you use a plastic stitch marker, whatever it is that you use, make sure you have that handy as well. And markers. Um, if you happen to have colored markers, great. If not, that's okay. You just want to have something that's contrasting. And the reason why is when we walk through, I'm going to move these over and you mark your loom. It is super handy to keep track of what color and how, how many more you have to do. So we'll get into that here in a minute. And last but not least, I am working with, um, this is the 80 peg um, adult size hat from KB Loom. And I'm gonna show you on this one, which is the 72. This is more for like teenage, you know, small teenagers, larger kids hats. Um, on how to get casted on, how to mark it, and everything like that. Now, with the instructions that I'm urging everybody to please print these out and have them handy with you, and the reason why is it, it coincides really well with this video, and it helps you understand when I do the sections and everything like that. So that's why right here it says I highly recommend following along with this video as well, okay? So we break it down with the cone section, with the body section, and the body section is once the cone is done, I'm going to show you here on Creepy Carl. So this red section is the last of the cone section, and then down here with the green, the white, the, the red, and then another of green, that's all done in the round, okay? So that is what I refer to as the body, and then we talk about the points and I refer to that as the pitched brim or the points on the brim. And then lastly, we talk about casting off and casting off on this is actually really easy. All right. 
So let's jump right in. The very first thing that we're going to do is I've already done it, but get some masking tape and mask off your loom. Now with the KB looms, they don't necessarily have an anchor peg or a starting peg. So you kind of have to create your own. I always have mine marked. So this is my starting peg. And what we're going to do, because each section, the, um, the red and the green is 24 rows. Okay. But the cone section is worked flat. So as you can see, I haven't stitched mine up or anything yet. All right. It's worked flat and it's okay that it's curling right now. So to answer anybody's question in advance, no, you do not have to steam block it because once we stitch it together in the cone, um, you'll be fine. So the cone section is worked in a flat panel. And the great thing about this is it's all unit. And with the unit, you can see you have nice, clean color changes. You don't have this. You see that right there? You don't have that with this because it's hidden on the inside. That's what happens when you're doing a pearl and you start a new color change on a pearl row. You end up with that discoloration of the colors blending. But on unit, you do not. So it's nice. It's clean. And you don't have to worry about any of that all right so the cone is is knitted in a flat panel so you're going to work back and forth and to show you what i'm talking about i haven't closed this off yet so it might be a little there you go so you could see that that's still open between these two because i wanted you guys to see that all of this that's on here right now is a flat panel so let's get started at this end because we're going to work from the top of the cone all the way down to the bottom rather than as you've seen with other videos that have made Santa hats and um, stocking caps where they work from the brim up I work from the top of the cone down and the reason why is it allows me to do this whole hat in one piece and gives me the opportunity to do these points so I've already gone ahead and I've marked this loom with masking tape and um, I'm going to show you how to cast on and how to mark your loom. So what you're going to do, this is 72, um, 72 pegs, whereas the adult, which is what the pattern is written for, is 80. So I'm going to show you right here how I mark this one. And that'll make more sense to you. So as you can see, I have my, my starter peg on this one colored black. Okay. So on this one, what you're going to do is you're going to do eight here. You're going to mark off. I did mine in green because my first section, which is down here at the bottom, is green. Okay. So as you can see here, where did I put it? Here it is. I have my starter here. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So whatever your starter peg is, have that be pretty much in the middle. And then that would be eight total in this section. And then you're gonna use whatever your contrast color is. In my case, it's the red. You're gonna mark four on each side of that. So you're gonna have two sections, like I say in the instructions, you're gonna have, um, two sections of eight and then 18 sections of four. This is what I'm talking about here. So when you start, you have eight on this side. And then if I flip it over to the opposite side, I kind of goofed up a little bit and then I realized after I was done marking it, but this is eight on the other side, on the very same other side, just flip. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is because it's bringing it to the last part of the flat panel for the cone so that we can get ready to close that and do in the round. But what we're going to do is you have this first section marked off with eight. And then on either side, you see, I have one, two, three, four, and I have a red marker here. 
one, two, three, four red marker here. Next to that, you're gonna do green. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's because I use green. Again, whatever you use, however you wanna mark it, that's up to you. And then you just continue that all the way around until you get to the opposite end. Get all these out of the way, goodness, gravy. There we go. And then you'll have this section in the back, which is eight. And for me, that's red because um, that's where I ended. So green, green, red, red, green, green. You guys get the point, okay? And the reason why is because as you're working this, um, did my red, it did. Hold on one second. My extra yarn got caught up in that. Um, the reason why is because as you're working this, you're going to start here as your starter peg, and then you're going to increase out. Okay, so to cast on to this, I'll show you here in a second, you're going to cast on to one, and that's it. Your cast on is done. After that, it's a matter of increasing out. So we're going to start by increasing on this side, e-wrap it, increase it, and then knit, knit, knit. You're going to do each peg three knits, and I'll explain that to you here. So what I used for this sample here is a worsted weight Karen Simply Soft in these two colors, which this one is red, rouge, rojo, and this one here, which is a limelight. So really fun, happy holiday colors. And then um, the white that I'll be using is just some leftover Karen Simply Soft white. And I'll be using that for the points. Okay, so let's get started. And what I'm going to do, because this one is a little different, um, because it's only 72 pegs, we're going to get started and do the opposite on this one. We started with green on the other one. So I know this is my starter peg here, so I'm going to count over one, two, three, because that's going to make it four. So one, two, three, four. Obviously, we know that that's four, so one, two, three, four on this side. And that's going to be my beginning section. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to switch colors. And if you don't have multiple color crayons like I do, crayons, I have crayons too, um, <laughs> Sharpies, that's okay. It's, it's no big deal. So now we're going to do four green on each side. So as you can see, one, two, three, and four. I'm doing this through my camera, so bear with me. Um, did I do that? Yeah, I did that. All right. I wasn't sure if I did it right. And then there we go. Okay. Now the other side. One, two, three, and four. All right. And we got that one. So now let's switch back to the red. And you're going to continue that all the way around. So I'm going to pause the video. And before you come to the other side to completely close out, meet me back here. So I'm going to pause it, meet me back here, and we'll finish it up. Okay. So as you can see, my starter peg. Okay. So this is a section we did eight. And then I did four green on this side, four green on this side, four red, four green. Four red, four green. And I did that all the way around until I got to eight in the back. Now, 72 is divisible by eight. Um, and on the 80 peg, if you remember, I started with green. I ended it with red. That's because there's an additional eight pegs on that one. So it doesn't really matter if you want to do a smaller hat and use this loom. You totally can. Um, don't think that it has to end on an opposite color. All right. So let's mark this one off. And then that way we know that the last eight are red on this one. Okay, so that's done. Sharpies away. All right. So now your whole loom, here's my starter peg, is color coded or marked in some way that you know each section um, and how it needs to be colored. Now, I know some of you are probably sitting there going, well, why don't you just have eight right here? Well, 
when we start this right here, this is all one section. And then when we change color and we go to the green, this is all going to be one section. Okay, so maybe now it makes a little more sense to everybody. And it increases, as you can see on this one, from side to side. So that's why there's that split right here still. Because this would have been like four and four. And I knew I had to go this and then work all the way back. And then I would go here and work all the way back. And then I would go here. So you guys understand a little bit better. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to cast on. It is so super easy. One peg and you're casted on. And don't forget, you need some kind of stitch marker or rubber band. I have one of my little ones right here, which comes really in handy. And also, if you happen to have some kind of um, row counter or a stitch counter, that way, um, you know, as you move along and it gets wider, when you get out to these wider sections, if you have to stop or pause, you know out of the three which one that you're on. So that way you can continue working. All right. So let me untangle this gnarly little mess I made here. And we're getting started with the red. All right. So you start by a simple slip knot. Now, with this one, you want to leave yourself at least a good uh, four inches. Um, as you can see with this one. When I cast it on, I left myself a nice amount. And the reason why is if you're going to do the pom-pom, you thread this and then you run it through the inside and then you can grab your pom uh, thread and pull it back out. Okay. It's super easy. So leave yourself, you know, a good four inches or so and then start your slip knot. However you want to make your slip knot, I do mine real simple. Okay. You're going to cast on your starting peg. There, you're casted on. Ta-da! It doesn't get much easier than that. <laughs> so now we're going to start our increases. And because we have even number here and we're on this side, we're going to start increasing out from this side here. So to increase out, all we're simply going to do is bring that yarn behind, do an E-wrap, grab it. Do another e-wrap. This is the only time you're going to e-wrap. The rest of this is done completely in a true knit or a unit. So that's what gives that nice, clean, tight knit stitch. You see that? Um, I'm sure people are going to say, well, my tension gets too tight and I don't like doing unit. We're going to talk about that. But so as you can see, now I've increased one. But we're going to work each peg three rows. So now that that's casted on over here, what I'm doing is where my starter peg was, I'm going to knit one, come behind. I always like to grab mine first, and I'm working through the camera, so it's kind of wonky. All right, so my row one is done. You're going to come right back and knit that one again. There's no turn and wraps on this. So... Here's two, let me grab that first. Two, okay. And now, come on. Ah! I'm doing this through the camera and it's a lot harder than it looks. Two, all right. And then get this other side. Two. Okay, so row two is done, and now row three. And if that starts to pop through there, that's okay. You can just tug it in the back. And this is the end of row three. And then what we're going to do is increase one on the other side. Okay, so row three is done. And now we're going to increase. So we're going to E-wrap and increase one. There's one. E-wrap it again. That's two. So now we've increased. So what I like to do moving forward from here, in case I get interrupted or anything, this is where you're going to start using your stitch marker. And you're going to move it side to side 
all the way around until it's done. Okay, so now I've cast it on this one. This is row one. Go all the way across. And again, if that pops through, that's okay. Bring the working yarn behind and you knit it again. This is row two. There we go. And now row three, bring it behind and in front and knit it off again. So row three is done. I'm gonna move my stitch marker because I'm gonna increase on that one and I'm gonna bring it to that one. So E rep and increase. So E rep one, twice, tug it a little bit. Grab that, E wrap it again, carry it over, tug it, and snug it up just a little bit. You don't have to go super, you know, Hulk on it. Now, row one, row two, again, you knit that same one. This is row two, and this is why having a row counter comes in handy so if you have kids or like me animals that catch your attention you know which one you were on all right and then three and then when we come to the stitch marker we're going to pick that up and we're going to move that so pick that up move it over to this side and now we know we're going to increase this one. And as you can see at this point, I have two empty reds and two empty reds, but now I'm gonna increase this one. And again, you're gonna E-wrap to do the increase. This is the only time you're gonna do E-wrap on this is when you do increases. So wrap it once, grab it, wrap it again. Come on. There you go. And tug it. Now row one. There you go, that's row one. You grab that same one and you, you knit it again. There is no turn and wrapping on this. This is row two. Knit it again, and this is row three. All right, now we're gonna move that stitch marker over to this side. We're gonna increase on this one, E-wrap, knit off one, grab it, knit off two. Oh. There we go, snug it up a little bit, and then begin row one. And now you'll see once I get to the end of this, I have one empty one and another red empty one. That's row one. Bring it in front. You wrap it again. This is row two. Bring it around, you knit, and that starts row three. And the reason why you wanna do three rows per peg, because that'll give you enough for the color variances and, and the thickness um, between the color changes and it looks a lot nicer too. All right, so that's the end of row three. We're gonna grab that stitch marker and we're gonna move it over to the other side. And we're gonna cast on and increase. A wrap, tug, and a second wrap. There we go, we're gonna snug that just a little bit. And we're gonna start row one. Mm -hmm. 
All right, that's the end of row one. We're going to bring that working yarn right back and unit. And we're getting started on row two. Go all the way down to the end. Knit that off, turn around and come right back in front. You knit that one again and we're gonna start row three. There we go, one more. Boom, that's the end of row three. So I'm gonna take this stitch marker and now it's gonna go over here to the first green one, but let's worry about Increasing on this last red one. So E wrap, grab, knit it off, grab it, knit it off again. There we go. So let's start row one. And as far as your tension, just keep in mind your hand is just there to guide your yarn. That's all. Do not go and pull it real tight. And the reason why you don't want to do that is you will hate yourself by the time you get maybe a quarter into this because it's going to be so hard to carry those knits over do not do that all right we're at the end of row one come back that's row two so as you can see i mean it looks kind of wonky right now because i am working with the camera between <laughs> my arms and i'm looking through the viewfinder like from my phone to see what i'm doing Normally I work a lot quicker than this, <laughs> but my tension is, is super, whoops, is super easy. Um, it's, it's not tight or anything like that. It glides over. That's another thing I like working with Kieran, um, super soft and we're getting started on row three, um, because it literally just glides right through your fingers and it's so easy to work with. And um, just relax your tension. Um, your yarn will talk to you. You have to listen. So if you're doing it too tight, it's going to make it difficult for you. So just relax it. All right. So this is where I'm going to show you how easy it is to change color. Now, I just knitted that once because we're not going back this way. We're getting ready to add on another color here. Now, as you can see, we already have that triangle. We have that tip which is this here on this one. Boom, done. Now we're gonna change colors. So I'm gonna grab my green and I don't like a bunch of slip knots. So what I do is I just bring it around my finger like this. I'm not knotting it off or anything, but I'm making that loop, okay? And I'm gonna attach it to the last red one. What is that? That is ugly. Get off of there. Here we go. I'm just going to attach it to this last red one that I did. And you're going to have to use a couple of fingers here because you want to hold your tension. So you're going to have three strands in your fingers. You're going to have two of the green and one of the red. And you're going to pull it not super, super tight that you can't carry that red over. You're just going to carry that red over the green like that. Then you're going to take the red and the short tail of the green and hold it over here and use this hand. Let's move this one over to the other side. Sorry, I should have done that first. Let's move him over here. There we go. All right. So now what you're going to do is increase this green one. So you're going to e-wrap once. And then twice and then have both of these right there between your thumb and forefinger and I have this right there underneath holding with my other fingers carry that bottom loop gently up over the top and pull it a little snug then E wrap it again again hold with those two fingers and gently oops again I'm doing this through the camera so bear with me let me see if I can do it this way. There we go. Pull it up and over. And you've increased and changed colors 
right there. So with these other ones still in your hand, bring this working yarn in front, carry that up and over, and tighten that up right there, still holding on to these two. Bring this over here, and this is where we're starting, row one. Bring this over here. Normally it's not this wonky for me, but again, I apologize because I have to do this through the camera. All right, so now that I have four casted on, what I'm gonna do, this is my working yarn, I'm gonna lay that here in the front, and then I'm just gonna shore up and, and tighten this a little bit. So you don't have to, again, don't go all Hercules on it. Pull it kind of snug, take the tail of the new green, or whatever color you're using, and just tie that in there and makes a nice, tight, clean little knot. There you go. Now this is nice and secure. And this is, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to stretch this across to the other side of the loom, take your scissors and then snip it. And the reason why you wanna keep a nice long tail when you snip this is because you're gonna eventually, I know they're hanging all wonky over here on this side. You're gonna use those long pieces to seam up this cone in each section so that way you're not using I'm gonna move this out of the way you're not using different colors to seam up the sections and then you see different colors in there okay as you can see you know there's there's no red in the green no white in the red no you know so you're using all those in that section to make it easier for you all right so let's bring this back over here there we go and that's how you do your color change. And then I'm gonna work this first section for you so you can continue to see. Remember we're on row one with this. All right, so that's the end of row one. Turn and wrap. And now we're starting row two. And again, just simple unit no other e-wraps other than to um do your increases when you have to increase there we go and this is coming up on the end of row two row two is done and now we're just going to bring that working yarn right around in the front again Oops. and knit that off and now this is row three and we're going to go over here and increase the green again so now you guys can see and understand why I separate and go out and then end up back at another point with larger with the eight now you know what I mean when I say the two sections of eight. And let's move this to the other side. So now you guys also have another idea of how easy this is. So increase, wrap once, tighten it up, wrap twice, and tighten it up. So there we go. So you'll continue doing that all the way around. You're gonna finish this green section, then change color when you hit the reds, then change color when you hit the green, and so forth and so on. And then that's how you will continue all the way and get all these sections. Okay, this is the inside of it, obviously. And that's what the outside looks like. All right, so once you get to this point where you have it all the way flat, you know, the cone is done with the flat panel and you're gonna start working in the round. You're gonna change color again. Now, remember with this one, I would have ended up on red. So like with this one, I ended up with red. I'm gonna change color right here and then do green all the way in the round. And you wanna do, um, I would say at least two more sections. You wanna have at least, um, 
four and a half to five inches for the cap, which is this part here. Um, I didn't do 24 in these um, color sections. I did this one a little smaller because a friend of mine is actually interested in this one and she didn't want it as long as this one. This one's actually a lot longer um, than, than the other one, okay? Because I have 24 in each section. This over here only has 15. So you want to have at least four and a half to five inches in the cap section so it fits snugly on somebody's head but still gives enough room for this to hang down and they can have fun with it all right so this one's a little bit longer so once you make sure that you have the body of it done i'm going to pretend now that the body of it is done and i'm going to do the pointed because everybody knows how to work in the round I don't have to do this in the round for you you guys know how to do that I'm gonna get to this point I'm gonna show you guys how to do the points now to do the points on this 80 peg in the instructions here I have oh it's down here so what you're gonna do is again this in this uh, written pattern is written for this 80 peg so keep in mind, if you're changing it up and you're using a different loom that's not the 80 peg, you will have to reconfigure and recalculate your loom, your, your loom for the amount that you're using, okay? So for this one, I break it down into sections of 10, and normally I would change out my masking tape because I'm just OCD like that. But for sanity's sake, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to just use my black marker and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. So my starter peg is right here. All right. So with this, you're going to break it down into sections of 10, whereas we had eight here, we're going to do 10 now. And the reason why is you're going to use odd number of nine, skip one. And the reason why you skip one is it gives you this little empty space right here. And then nine. So each one of these points is actually nine pegs. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as my center peg. So this would be number five. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Or wait. Yeah. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I want to make sure that I have the same amount. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Because we're skipping this one. All right. So this one, right where my finger is, I'm going to put an S. That's kind of sloppy because I'm doing it through the camera. S. All right. So I know that this and this is going to be my new area to work all right and i know that the green already looked dark but you guys get the gist of it okay so that's going to be my first section for um my point so i'm going to skip this one and then i'm going to do one two three seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so this is actually gonna be an S for a skip. And we'll mark that one also. Sorry, I'm doing it out of camera range because it's easier for me to see that way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right. There we go. All right. So just continue that all the way around. Count to 10, mark it with an S, and then put that line in the middle. This is why the masking tape is so super awesome to use. So I'm going to pause this. Meet me back here when you're done marking. All right. So as you can see, I have mine all remarked with my S's, which is for skip, and my lines. All right. 
So that tells me where these brackets are. That's where I'm going to do my, um, my pitches, my points. And the S's are ones that I'm going to skip and just go over. So once you're done your body work, which is that extra four and a half to five inches right here, um, you're going to do, if you're going to do your points white, like I did on Creepy Carl's hat here, um, I do two rows, two complete rows all the way around of, in this case, the white. Okay, so we're going to pretend for, you know, time's sake that I've already done two rounds of that. I'm just here to show you guys how to do those points. And the reason you want to have those two is it just gives it a little bit of a, a cleaner look. Um, especially like right here where you do the transition of the color. You don't see the green sticking right automatically up. So what I'm going to do for these points, they're actually pretty simple. We're going to get started right here in this section, which is there's my starter peg right there. I'm going to grab my white. And I am simply going to do the same thing with adding a new color like I did before. So I'm just going to make my loop. And I'm, I'm not going to get started on the S and I'm not going to get started in the middle because we're going to go wide to small. That's what gives us the point instead of, you know, starting here and working out. No, we're going to go wide to small. So I am going to cast on right here on the first line next to my S. And just like before, you're going to grab that yarn there, pull it up and over. Okay. And that's it you're ready to go. You don't have to e-wrap it or do anything else. So you want to make sure that this yarn here, you don't pull this one, your working yarn so much that that slips through. You see? So give yourself enough of a tail here that you prevent that from happening. Okay. And that also helps to make sure that you're not pulling too hard. So you're going to just simply unit all the way across that bar section that you marked off. Do not knit on the sections that say S because that is a skip. We're going to do one point at a time. And with these, where we did three rows for the color section, we're going to do four for the points. Okay, and that gives you enough that it gives you enough of a nice big point to be noticeable. All right, so that is row one that I just did. So you're gonna turn, bring that working yarn right in front, do a unit, and we're gonna do row two. And you're gonna do that four times for each row. Now this is where having a second stitch marker um, to come in handy. See, now that, that one's that really loose one. So if you notice that happening, it's okay. Bring that working yarn in front, knit it off, tug it, and after we finish this back and forth, back and forth one more time, we're going to knot that off, okay? So bring it around, you knit that off, and don't be afraid to kind of snug that up a little bit. Now we're going to start row three, and go all the way across, so you're knitting all nine. And then you're going to decrease on both sides. All right. So we just did one, two, three. Now we're going back here, which will make it four. Give me a little more yarn. There we go. All right, so that's four. Now we're gonna decrease. We've already knitted this one off, so we don't have to knit it off again. We're simply going to go to the second and we're gonna knit two through eight. And this is where having another stitch marker will come in handy. So I'm gonna grab one that I have here and let me grab the other one that I have. And I put this one here so I know not to knit that one. And I have my other one here so I know I'm not going to knit these two because I'm coming in. All right. So now we're going to do 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One and nine are already done, okay? So, unit, and this is gonna be row one. Grab it. Knit it off. Unit all the way across, and again, four times, back and forth, back and forth. And again, pay attention, don't pull your tension so tight that it makes it difficult for you. It looks like it's difficult for me only because I'm doing it through the camera and it's just wonky. When it's sitting on my lap on my chair, I move a lot faster, trust me. All right, so this is row two. Turn and wrap to start row three. And then row four. This video is a bit longer than my other videos usually are, only because there's a lot more steps with this one than with others. All right, so now we are done with the second decrease. So now we're going to move this one to two, this one over, and we're going to work these five. So three through seven, unit, and that starts row one. Give myself some more working yarn, there we go. Two. Row three. And row four. Perfect. Now, same thing. Move that over. Move that over, and then we only have these three. So, you wrap. This is row one, it's gonna be super quick. Row two. Row three. And row four. Perfect. And if you want to move your stitch markers, you can, but for me, I'm not going to. I'm going to take them off because I'm just going to knit this one, which is my center one, four times. One, two, three, and four. There we go. And I do one more because now I'm going to... You want to leave yourself again about a good four inches just so you have enough that if you're going to attach bells or anything to it, you can use this to do that. Boom. And then I cut that and leave that on there until you're ready to cast off. Okay. That's it. And then you're going to continue all the way around doing all your points. So you're going to skip this one. You're not going to put anything on there. You're going to skip it. You're going to start this one the same exact way like you did the other one, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take that off of there and I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to um, start stitching this up with a mattress stitch, which is super easy. So I'm gonna turn this around, put that over there. So this top part, I leave that until the very end right before I add my pom-pom because I want to stitch my pom-pom and then I stitch that closed. So I'm going to go to this second section here and I'm going to grab my long red tail. 
which is this long piece right here. All right, so I'm gonna thread that up. Let me grab my needle real quick. Get back in there. There we go. I'm gonna grab my darning needle. Hopefully my eyes are gonna work with me today. Ta-da! There we go. All right. Now, we're going to do this inside out. So, remember this side, the knitted side, is the nice clean side that everybody's going to see from the outside. So, we're going to pretend that this is inside out, and we're going to bring these two pieces around. And you want to line up. And the great thing is on this is if you look, let me see if I can focus this in. There you go. Each section where you increased, you have a nice little stitch pocket. So you could see it right there on that one too. So use those. Use those to help you stitch because then you get a nice clean stitch. So you could see that one too um, on each side. So if this was already casted off and I was using the whole thing, obviously I'm not done this hat. So... If this was already cast it off, you would pull it inside out and, and do what I'm doing right now. So, we're going to work from the bottom, which is where my, my yarn starts. Make sure that if there's anything tied to it, like this green one, just give it a nice tug so that way it's pretty secure. And then, if you look right there... It's hard to see with the orange background. There's a nice little gap from um, the cast on. And then there's another one on this side right there. So I'm going to use those two and bring it together. Mattress stitch is pretty easy. I'm trying to keep this in the center so you guys can see it. There you go. And you're just going to work back and forth. You don't want to come across and keep going in the same direction. You just want to keep working back and forth. You can see that little gap right there. Maybe not, but I see it. There's another little hole right there. And just come across. And don't pull it so tight that it bunches up. You don't want to do that. Just let it relax and keep it seamed. So that way you have a nice clean stitch all the way across. And just continue this all the way up. Again, I'm trying to do this through the camera, so bear with me. I know I say that a lot. Sorry. Here we go. And this is why giving yourself enough of a tail um, when you do your color changes is really helpful because it'll give you a nice clean look without different color yarn stitching up. You know, you don't want to stitch up a green area with red yarn. It's like stitching up brown pants with yellow thread nope. and just continue this all the way there you go and just work it back and forth sorry I'm trying to look at it through underneath also because I don't have my glasses on there we go and you're just going to continue this all the way up. Whoa. There we go. And try not to go too far in on your stitches as far as like in this way. You want to stay um, as... Whoop figures as close to the edge as possible so that way it doesn't um, get bunched up or you know look messy at all you want a nice clean looking stitch there we go this is a lot harder when you try to do it through the camera
almost done this section and take your time don't feel like you have to rush I I am because I promised I would have this out to everybody today and um, I was just running behind because I had so many things going on here at home Done. almost done one more there you go and then what I'm gonna do on that is just take that loop and knot it off and again don't pull it so tight that you bunch up that section okay you want to do it enough that it's secure and then what you could do is you have this other piece of red here and secure it to that as well one tight little knot two tight little knots and then you would just continue to do that all the way down and I don't want to flip this completely out yet but you see you got nice clean little stitches there okay and you just do that all the way down and you stitch it up now when you want to add your bells to like how I have here on creepy Carl what you do is you take your thread or your yarn and this is where it's a bit of a pain in the butt I suggest having tweezers close by you have to run your yarn through the ball of the bell first, which is the base of the bell first. And you got it. And this is where trying to add bells with um, thick yarn is not going to work. And why you should have tweezers because I have tweezers over at my chair. And when I put it through that, I grab the other side as it starts to poke through. Oh, it worked. Come on. Please, please stay there. Don't move. <laughs> I am begging my yarn. There we go. Woo! You, once this is um, already um, cast it off and everything, you would add your bells then, and then you would stitch this part in. But I want to show you how to add the bells. Now, to cast off, um, it's actually super easy what you do is you take a piece of the the white or the whatever color you used for your points okay and um you want a complete circle and a half of your loom so you want to wrap it at least once and then a half and then you're simply going to run it through everything where the where it has yarn do not pull it super tight okay you just want to grab them all off and then you're going to see they're all connected like that. And then at the end, once they're all connected, add your bells, secure them down. And then at the end, once everything is in place, then you're going to do a nice little tug, not super tight. And then stitch it so it's secure. And basically what that does is it just holds them in shape in place. That's all. All right. So I... I tried not to take up too much time because I had to explain everything to you. I also have, like I said, the written instructions, which go through everything. Um, so if you have any questions, as always, feel free to message me. You can find me in my group, Love to Loom. You can find me on Instagram. You can email me at ilovetoloomknit at gmail.com. Feel free to uh, leave me any questions in the comments here on YouTube, but I think you guys got this. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm sorry this was so long, but it just was, I had a lot to explain. <laughs> Happy looming, everybody. Love you. Bye.